Good evening. Um, I'd like to call the special call Davie County Commissioner's meeting of June twentieth to order. Um, Mark, would you like to lead us in the invitation? Glad to. Yes, sir. Let's pray. Father, we just uh, thank you for uh, a great day yesterday in our houses of worship. We thank you for placing us in this greatest of all counties, Father, and this greatest of all nations. And Father, we thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your goodness. We thank you for the blessings that you bestowed upon us. And Father, we, we continue to come to your throne to thank you for those men and women that fight on battlefields today that we might be free. Those men and women that sacrifice their lives and their time uh, with law enforcement and EMS and uh, Father, our, our volunteer fire departments, Lord, bless them, touch them, protect them, uh, uh, give, give them richness and fullness of life. And Father, we thank you for, uh, for uh, this board and for their leadership. We pray you give us wisdom and discernment tonight to do what you have called us do, to do to take on the agenda, um, your agenda, not ours. And Father, just acknowledge that it is through you that true freedom, liberty, and justice comes. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. You will stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Five zero. Thank you. Um, Public comments, Mr. Vogler. Mr. Vogler, um, we'll move on to the adoption of the 2016-2017 budget. Mr. Ruffin, you got anything you'd like to add to that? Um, I think uh, all we want to say, Mr. Chairman, is uh, we've got the budget ordinance is balanced. Uh, it reflects all of the decisions you've made in your reviews of the budget, and we also have um, fee schedules for health department and other uh, internal service funds and other departments, uh, parks, uh, recreation parks, for example, has a new fee schedule. All of those addressed uh, in the budget ordinance with that. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Are you in receipt of all the interlocal agreements? We have um, reached agreement on um, We've, we've gotten Bermuda Run and we've gotten Coolamy and, we, and Mox was going to approve theirs on the 28th and we've reached agreement on their interlocals. So on the 5th we'll have all six interlocals because there are two for each jurisdiction due to the change in sales tax. There's a sales tax in a local and a services in a local. We've reached agreement on all. So we're just waiting on Moxville's board to approve theirs. Right. Any other questions for... Mr. Ruffin, or any comments? Just a couple quick questions. Um, the fire departments, um, have they all signed their agreements down? Um, I think we had one we were waiting on, if I remember still correctly. Waiting. My understanding is we're still waiting on it. I'm not seeing it, the signed copy. Yeah, we were told it's been signed, but it hadn't been dropped off. So with that exception, I think all of our other departments have signed and we have them on uh, in receipt. And then this may be something to look into, but Ron raises an interesting question about fund reserve and <clears throat> how you calculate it. Perhaps there's an answer or a partial answer now, but, but it's an interesting question. I think. Yeah, it is. And um, actually, there is no statutory requirement for the school system to have a fund balance um, or an undesignated fund balance really the emergency funds that he referred to we refer to as undesignated fund balance there is a statutory calculation as how we determine it and it does have to include both the current expense and capital outlay appropriations for the schools we do have to include that in our calculation of available fund balance 
So we're following statute on that. Most school systems, and this is obviously a good practice, have sort of drawn their lines where they think their fund balance reserves need to be. Davy's done that. I think that's a great thing. But schools are not statutorily required to maintain a fund balance. But I think it's wise that they all do. And, and okay, tell me then the wisdom, um, just, I hear the logic, but <clears throat> the wisdom behind us setting aside, if Ron's numbers are correct, and I'm sure they are, 2.5 million, and then the school system setting aside another 17% seven, of what, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say 1.7 million, which would be about $4.2 <clears throat> million. If that money, in fact, is set aside in our fund balance, where, where, where's the immediate wisdom to them having another $1.7 million set aside of taxpayer dollars? Well, Mr. Keister's observation implies that we're actually setting aside emergency funds for schools. That's not the case. We're not setting aside emergency funds for anyone. We're setting aside an undesignated um, available fund balance of an amount, in our case a little over 25% we project, for the board to use for whatever. It, it, you know, it's, it's available for um, one-time capital expenditures. You have a policy that sort of stipulates what you can use it for. But there's no funds that's set aside and designated for public school emergencies. But there, I, I understand that. But there's a broad, and there's a, you know, there's obviously a broader mm -hmm. use of the of the reserves. But we are setting aside that money based on the amount that we are budgeting. We're, them. we're setting aside um, in the calculation, right, uh, an amount of our operating budget that includes current expense and capital because the statute defines that we have to do it that way. And so that amount is not designated for anything. It's available for appropriation as how the board deems fit, but it's not actually set aside specifically for schools, for for sheriff, or for any okay. agency. Well, I don't want to I don't want to extend this tonight because but but I think there's some legitimacy to his comments because if we're setting aside that broad dollar figure, the the, the taxpayers of this county have 4.2 million dollars set aside. Uh, and there would be some indication that if we're, even though we have a broader use of the dollars that we, we're setting aside in overall operations, we're still setting that, that dollar figure aside and so are they. So these are dollars that aren't necessarily, uh, that are either however you want to define it, either you're overtaxing the people of the county uh, because they have $1.7 million set aside and even though it's it, there's a broader definition to it, we have 2.5 million dollars set aside. There's there that is still a large block of dollars that are set aside based on their mm -hmm. budget, and uh, I guess my my indication my my thought here would be or my question is if they're setting aside that 1.7 million, it it it's just there. Um, if they had an emergency, we already have, uh, in theory, set aside 2.5 million over here, even though it is there is a broader context to it. Why do we need to have? Why do we need to have mm -hmm. two two blocks? So let's let's play that out. If we were to reduce our fund balance by that amount, our percentage would then go down. We would be below our peer percentages, and we'd also be hearing from bond rating bureaus about having a fund balance percentage that's below what our peer groups I'm not necessarily saying we need to. I'm saying there's a statute, you indicated there's no statutory requirement that the there's school not. system have $1.7 million there's setting not. aside. Some school systems okay. have more, some have less, okay. some have none. Okay. Is there a more, it, 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 is there more immediate access to those dollars? Is that the rationale that they would have that? No, they, and, and they do need some, um, mm -hmm. they've got to have some for their cash flow needs before some of their state, you know, state budget doesn't prove. Pretty much school systems across the state live on their reserves until the budget's adopted and they start getting their uh, LPA revenues and they're getting okay. one twelfth of the county's money, so they use it for cash flow. Uh, the question is always from the local school board issues, how much do we need to have in our reserves for cash flow and for just normal emergencies that come up? And 
I've seen 16%, I've seen 17, I've seen 25. And like I said, some of the smaller systems have none. They just go to the county when they need money. I don't think that would be appropriate for a system of this size, but a, for a very small system I can see doing that. Well, it's a good question. I'd like more information on it. I mean, I do think that the school system, as I understand, is in a different situation than obviously a county department or other departments that can rely entirely upon the county spending because they get the money, a lot of their money from the state. And if the state doesn't come through with adequate uh, financing for that particular year, then it would be prudent for them to have a reserve, to my way of thinking. It was just something that I think has been brought up that's a good point by Ron and, and deserves perhaps more study and more explanation so everybody can understand it better. We have a meeting on July 14th, I think, Education Committee, Richard and Terry will be meeting and we'll take that forward, and, trying and, to get more information for you. And your point is it is a normal operating procedure for most counties, Yes. most school systems. Yes, have. it is. And the LGC, if I'm not mistaken, does recommend that the school system have a fund balance at least 30 days of operations for they cash do. flow. That's right not statutorily required as Mike said, or Mr. Ruffin said, but but LGC does recommend that as best practices. All right, any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none, um, entertain a motion to approve 2016-17 budget as presented. Mr. Chairman, I will make that motion and also thank the county employees and the administration for all the hard work that they have done putting this budget together. Have a motion and I'll have a second. 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 Any further discussion? I would just like to echo Mr. Poindexter's comments about thanking everyone for all their hard work it was it's always a, a lot of work but this year was no different and thank you very much all right, okay. all right any other comments seeing none we'll call for the vote all in favor of the budget as presented raise your hand that passes five zero thank you very much last item on the agenda is to adjourn so Someone like to make that motion? I would make that motion as well. I'll second it. All right. All in favor, raise your hand. Thank you for your attendance, and we are adjourned. <laughs>